Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this is either going to be a long video or a short video. I don't know how long it's going to take because I'm going to be attempting to demonstrate and explain some things about auto-tune and pitch correction because that's what we've been talking about recently on the channel. And I'm going to attempt to explain why I think so many people have a problem with auto-tune and pitch correction and don't treat it as just any other effect. This is something that I get quite a lot from people commenting about auto-tune and pitch correction saying it's just an effect exactly the same as reverb and delay so people shouldn't worry about it so much or get so frustrated with its use and all that kind of thing. I did make a video quite a while ago attempting to explain the difference between uh, different effects such as auto-tune, pitch correction, reverb, delay, but obviously I didn't explain it very well. So what I'm going to do tonight is apply auto-tune and pitch correction to my guitar to hopefully show how pitch correction, auto-tune, is different to reverb and delay and other plugins that you might use in your door, your digital audio workstation, such as Logic Pro 10, which I'm going to be using tonight. So first of all, don't panic if you don't know about recording techniques or recording software. My aim for this video is to explain it in a way that everybody can understand, so you don't need any prior knowledge. Up on screen, this is going to look very complicated to you, but all it is, is some rhythm guitar that I've recorded, and then some lead guitar that I've recorded, and then some lead guitar I've recorded with wrong notes, just to demonstrate what correcting wrong notes with auto-tune and pitch correction sounds like, and what it sounds like when I've applied it to my lead guitar. So, at the top here, these are what's known as plugins, or effects. So, I mean, the first one, you don't have to worry about that. That's something that I've used to get rid of my breathing because I just recorded it here. <laughs> you know, I wasn't taking it seriously. It's just to demonstrate things. You can hear my breathing on this microphone when the other microphone was recording. So anyway, that's all that's for to take out my breathing. But underneath that, we have an amp, which is going to simulate distortion. The effect, these are just plugins, but we're calling them effects, that's what they are effect effectively. And then we've got reverb under that and then delay under that. So anyway, we're now going to listen to me playing a, a generic backing and playing some lead over the top with the cleanest tone I could possibly get for my guitar through the amp that I've got. So you'll hear that the lead guitar is very clean indeed, but let's have a listen. <laughs> And there we have it. And you would have seen these things popping around here. And that's the sound of my lead guitar. Uh, very much on the old hi-fi systems used to get this like, a visual representation of the volume of what you're listening to. But anyway, that was me just playing some lead on a very clean tone. And the reason that I did it on the cleanest tone is because I'm trying to simulate a voice here. So when we sing, we don't have any effects on our voice. So what happens with the voice in the studio is they add reverb to it. So that's exactly what we're going to do with the guitar. I'm going to click this on and now we're going to have a listen and see how it sounds. <laughs> And I'm just going to jump in here because we don't have to hear it the whole way through. But you can hear how it's now got space around it. And reverb, I mean, all it's doing is simulating a space. So like when you go into a cave and you shout, you get that cavernous sound. But the reverberation of your voice in that cave, and it's that that this is trying to simulate. And put the guitar in a space, in a room. 
So what we can say about reverb, and some people even say that, oh, adding reverb to your guitar or your voice is cheating. But we can hear that my guitar hasn't changed. I can take this off and we can listen again. <laughs> So you can hear how what I'm playing on the guitar, i.e. what I would be singing, hasn't changed. All that's been added to it is reverb. So all the notes that I hit that were correct are still correct, but now they've got a little bit of that spacey sound on it. And reverb, in my opinion, isn't cheating because all it's doing is simulating a real world situation. If you go into a cave and start singing, somebody doesn't run up and say, oh no, you're cheating because you're singing in a cave. You've got to come out here and sing on the beach. You know, all it's doing is simulating an environment that you can get on earth and simulating something that happens naturally to sound waves. It doesn't change the pitch. And if, if somebody went into a cave and they couldn't sing and were all over the place, nobody's going to sit there and go, oh, what a wonderful voice that person has. The, Reverb doesn't change the voice. It would just sound like a really bad voice. But now in this cavernous space with reverb. Now we'll listen to the same guitar, but with delay on the sound. Let's turn it on. And again, we don't need to listen to it the whole way through. But hopefully you can now hear that everything I'm playing is getting repeated. It's a delay. So like I've said on lots of analysis videos before with vocals, sometimes delay is your worst enemy. Because if you hit a wrong note, you're going to hit it. <laughs> you're going to hear it wrong three or four more times. So when we apply this to the natural world, again, delay is something that happens naturally. If somebody's in like a canyon and they shout out and they go, hello, 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 you can hear that repeating because sound waves bounce off things. And if it bounces off something really far away and comes back at you off a flat surface, you hear a delay. So again, this is replicating something that happens naturally in the world and something that happens naturally to sound waves. It doesn't change what I've played. And let's listen and I'll turn it on and off so you can hear the difference. So you can hear that there's, there's no change in what I've played. There's no change in pitch. There's no manipulation of my original playing. Everything's getting added to my original playing. It never changes. Finally, to the distortion, which is the amp here. And it's a bit of a nasty sound because I'm exaggerating this, but we'll have a listen through. Because again, people are saying that auto-tune and pitch correction is exactly the same as using distortion on your guitar. So let's have a listen now and see what effect this has. <laughs> So you can hear that, yeah, now it's distorted, but when we take it off and listen, and add it, the original sound is still my guitar playing and everything that I did. So again, distortions being added to something that already existed and it's just embellishing that sound. Let's have a listen to me now playing wrong notes intentionally on the guitar. And first of all, we'll listen to it in exactly the same way that we did with the other guitar, hearing it clean. So with that, 
I'm intentionally not playing in the key and not playing notes that are relevant uh, to the key of the backing. And at the end, I've literally thrown in a random bend, just anywhere on the guitar, just to prove the point. So now when I add reverb to this, let's have a listen. It still sounds wrong. Reverb has not changed that original sound where I was playing wrong notes. And we can do the same thing. Let's take off that and add the delay. So again, this hasn't corrected any wrong notes that I'm playing. It's just repeating the wrong notes three or four times after. And if I think, right, if, yeah, well, if reverb and delay are exactly the same as auto-tune and pitch correction, if I put them both on, then it will now make this sound a lot better because that's what this is doing, if it is the same as auto-tune and pitch correction. But it's still sounding wrong. So what if I just turn on everything and add distortion. So now we've got three things that people do often refer to as cheating. We've now got the reverb added to the delay, now added to distortion. So this must definitely make it sound good. <laughs> uh, I love that line that I went to there. Um, it's just uh, so crazy, but anyway, that still sounds wrong. It still sounds out of key. And if you were up on stage playing that, maybe at a blues festival, I think people would start looking at each other thinking, oh, he, he doesn't really know what he's doing. Um, or he's totally wrong with where he's putting his fingers and then listening on. You might think, oh, well, there's vibrato in there, but his pitch is all over the place. And this is the point that no matter what you add to something, such as delay, reverb, which happen naturally in the world, even adding in distortion, which you could argue again with somebody's voice, when they start leaning into their sound, they get a raspiness to it. And that is like a vocal distortion. So it's something that can naturally happen to the voice. What can't naturally happen to the voice is for you to sing a line and then listen to it back and that line have fundamentally changed. So. What I'm going to do now is mute all the wrong notes that I played and now play them corrected. So this is the equivalent of using auto-tune and pitch correction, but on my guitar to correct everything that I played that was wrong. So let's have a listen to this. And there's the random note at the end that I've now pitch corrected to be in key. And listening to that, imagining that you're at a blues festival or something and somebody starts playing that, it sounds fine. And that's the point that that was, by the way, just in case you're not following, that's this. I'll take that off, but it's this guitar with all of the wrong notes being played intentionally, I've now pitch corrected and auto-tuned that to now make it sound that it's correct. So I've changed the fundamental sound, the actual file, what would be somebody's voice. I have changed it so that you're not hearing it anymore. You're hearing the result. And, you know, let's put on some reverb and delay.
And there we have it. So that is the corrected version of all the notes that I was playing before that were wrong and I was playing them intentionally out of key in different places so I was actually kind of going sharp by semitone then flat by semitone then did a random bend at the end so the point is hopefully to show the difference between just adding reverb delay uh, and distortion to a sound and whether it be your voice or guitar, you don't usually add distortion to your voice because you do that. You, you put on that sound, you try and get rasp if you're going for that. But with delay and reverb, it's always going to be the person's voice that you're hearing first. And then you hear those other effects afterwards. With pitch correction, you never get to hear what happened first because it doesn't exist anymore. Like this corrected version that we've just listened to, this doesn't have any of the first lead I did. And we know it doesn't have any of it because there aren't any wrong notes anymore. So obviously, you know, I've just done this quickly, but you can correct all manner of off notes. And the reason that this is really important in relation to singing is because singing on pitch is certainly for me, one of the things that took me longest to be able to achieve. You have to work so hard at getting close to where notes are because it's muscle memory. You have to try and teach your voice, your vocal cords, your airflow, everything that you need to zero in on a pitch that you're aiming for. Obviously with guitar, it's easier to demonstrate because you can just tune your guitar and you will get that note. So the reason that auto-tune and pitch correction are so different for vocals is that you now don't have to worry about training your voice to hit the notes accurately because that can all be done afterwards and they just change your voice. So you can't hit the notes, but don't worry about that. Nobody's ever going to hear this. What you're singing into the microphone, nobody's ever gonna hear that. They're only ever gonna hear the results of what we do, which means that you don't get any of what the artist did in the first place. So I think that's why a lot of people have got a problem with specifically auto-tune and pitch correction because it is fundamentally changing what exists and it's doing away with what actually happened. <laughs> doing away with what happened and making something new exist that didn't happen and that's what we hear. So hopefully this makes sense <laughs> in terms of the, I mean, all of the plugins, like if you go to any digital audio workstation, all of the plugins you get, all of the modulations, whatever you're choosing, they're all being applied to a sound that has happened and the pitch isn't being changed. Only if you're you know, doing a pitch slide, you, which you might do on a keyboard, but it's not trying to get the note to where it should be because it failed. You, If you're playing keys, the notes are tuned anyway. If you're playing guitar, the notes are tuned. Where it becomes difficult is where you sing the notes. And that's why singing is so different and why people love great singers who sing really accurately pitch-wise because it's a skill. It's something that they've worked at. They haven't sung it and then thought, oh, I can't do this but there's some technology that exists that makes me sound as accurate as somebody who has worked for years at getting closer to the pitches. So again, this is totally different to somebody applying auto-tune and pitch correction to their voice stylistically, artistically, because they want that sound. That's fine. I think the problem ha people have is when it's being applied and nobody knows it's happening because they're trying to hide the fact that the person either didn't hit the notes as accurately as they should have done. But what's even worse that we've looked at on the channel recently is they're auto-tuning great singers who don't need it in the first place, like the Keen video that we looked at recently. And that's something that Will I Am does a lot. Uh, he, he says quite openly that he can't sing. So, you know, he uses Talkbox and he uses auto-tune and, you know, he uses pitch correction and all these things, but it's part of his sound. When people start auto-tuning performances, you know, from Freddie Mercury and Randy Meisner that we've looked at, that's where people have got a real problem because those guys can sing and they never asked to be auto-tuned. It's just the record labels are doing it now and re-releasing stuff. Hopefully this now makes sense and might explain the difference between fundamentally changing something at its creational stage 
and then having something that you created that is what it is and it's not being changed and then you add an effect to it afterwards. Uh, that's the difference between pitch correction and auto-tune is fundamentally changing that. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for all of the comments on the recent videos about this topic and let me know what you guys think as always in the comment section below if you do have any requests or suggestions for future videos then you can put those in the comment section as well but i hope you have enjoyed this video if you have please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll catch you guys at the next one rock